Our next guest into the Daily Connerton Memorial Company interview chair is a person who has never run for elected office in his life. And guess what? He is succeeding uh, Len Fasano. Not, of course, as the uh, Republican uh, Senate leader, but his district, uh, which is the, I think it's the 34th district, right? It comprises the towns of East Haven, North Haven, Wallingford, and Durham, making his debut on Mornings with Gary Byron. Let's welcome Repres- excuse me, Senator-elect Paul Ciccarella. Paul, good morning. Paul, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you, Gary? Great, Paul. How are you? Good, good. Well, good. I'm glad to. I'm glad to hear that. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I only know that um, that you grew up in East Haven, and, but you now live in North Haven. That's about all I know of you. <laughs> well, that is correct. Yes, I was born and raised in East Haven. Um, attended local area schools. Um, uh, there, I, I um, excelled in wrestling. Went off to college for a few years and came back to East Haven. Coached uh, high school and youth wrestling mm-hmm. for almost ten years. During that time, I, I began my career in law enforcement, met my wife. Um, shortly after um, meeting my wife, we moved to North Haven, um, have two children. Um, while on the job, I got hurt um, about 11 years ago, forcing me to start my own business. And now I have a few businesses here in Connecticut. A few? Huh? And, uh, wow. Yeah. What, what kind of businesses are they? <clears throat> so I have an investigative and security consulting firm here in Connecticut. Um okay. And a, um, a countermeasure is uh, more of a debugging uh, company nationally. Mm-hmm. And I have a, a security company that does um, cameras um, and other security type of uh, services. Uh, yeah. So you, are, you, are you also like a private investigator or is that com- something completely different? No. Nope, yeah, no, I am licensed. I am a licensed private investigator. Oh, yeah. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. And you, <laughs> yeah. said, you said you're married and you've got uh, kids, right? Yep, two children. Very my daughter Giada, who just turned eight, and my son Paulie, who's six. Oh, very nice. So I got to ask you: um, never running for elective office, uh, what what made you decide to, uh, I, I guess, toss your hat into the proverbial uh, political ring? <laughs> so that's a great question. Um, uh, if you asked me a year ago today, if I would be uh, even running for office. Uh, Probably wasn't in my um, near future. Um, I was involved in in North Haven um, local politics a little bit. I was the vice chair of the town committee Mm -hmm. um, and just looking to get involved um, just to stay in the know and see how I could help. Um, uh, Like I said, I was on the job. I was in law enforcement and, um, you know, I did that to help. And unfortunately, that was cut short. So um, when I was approached and asked by Len if I'd be interested in this, I, I thought long and hard and. I said, why not? I said, this is the best way, and things happen for a reason. So as soon as he asked me, I thought long and hard. I asked my wife. She said I could. And <laughs> and then from there, we were off to the races. We were working hard, um, started campaigning early, even though it was a little uh, challenging um, to do that in these times. Yeah. We, we still uh, went out every day and knocked on doors and spoke to people, and, and now here I am. So you take you're taking over the uh, the position. Well, not so much the, the the position up at the Capitol, but the district uh, one previously held by Len Fasano. Was he a mentor to you? Did he help you? Did he offer you any advice? Yes. Yep. He offered me advice. Um, I've known Len for a long time. He actually got me um, kind of involved in North Haven um, local politics when I moved here, um, and I worked at the Beach Club and, and have been a member at his beach club in East Haven for, for years. So I've known Len for a long time. Um, and he, he also uh, vowed to be there as a resource. I have him on speed dial. So um, <laughs> I'm comfortable. That was a contingency of me uh, running for office that he, he would be on speed dial. And he said I could call him anytime. <laughs> Very nice. Um, <laughs> it's if you got him on speed dial. Wow, that's pretty good you know you you mentioned your background in law enforcement and and that background should be an asset to you as a member of the uh legislature's public safety committee um is is that something that is going would that committee interest you or have you already received i would imagine you've already received your committee assignments right yes yep and that was one that i did request um and and uh, senator kelly was gracious enough to allow me to to be on that committee 
Um, and I do think that I, I could really help out there, um, you know, with my law enforcement background, but even my last um, 10 years or so of being in my own business and dealing with a lot of the um, issues, um, whether it's criminal defense or, or, you know, helping people get answers and solve problems on a daily basis, both private citizens, companies, and municipalities. I think that experience of problem solving um, hopefully will be a, a real benefit up at the Capitol for me to make a difference. Yeah, I've noticed that there's a lot of um, p- police officers, both past and present, that are running for office more now than ever. Uh, recently, was a couple of terms ago, Dan Champagne, who's going to be one of your colleagues. He's a former police mm-hmm. officer. Kevin Whitko's a former police officer. Um, and there's even some in, in the House of Representatives that, uh, that are, that are new to politics, but particularly state politics that have a, a law enforcement background. Any coincidence or do you think that police accountability bill, uh, was the impetus behind this? Well, that's a big problem. Um, mm. um, that bill is a big problem, and that could be a driving force behind the, um, you know, law enforcement professionals getting involved in politics because it, it's a trickle down effect. Um, you know, sometimes uh, legislators make laws and they're intended for good, but the unintended consequences could be so much more detrimental to the to the government to, to the state, and um, and people are seeing it. Um, so it definitely could be uh, part of the reason why a lot of law enforcement and, and, and prior law enforcement are getting involved to, to help out, uh-huh. because this is, this is not good, um, what's going on. You, you'll be a freshman senator, um, and it's, it's, a, it's an interesting world up at the Capitol. I, I remember my first term as a freshman um, a legislator myself, and uh, just kind of... I remember, I just, particularly my, my first, even my first week, I was going to say my first day or two, but even my first week of navigating your, your way around and, and you're, you're pinching yourself saying, am I really here? Do I really, you know, holy smokes, uh, what have I gotten myself into? And everything, <laughs> everything kind of pops into your mind. Have you set any, um, have you set any goals for yourself as a freshman senator? Um, just to learn, yeah. um, learn as much as I can. Um, and, you know, Really, don't don't rush to make decisions um, until I know what the outcome of the decisions are going to be. That's right. Um, I was asked if I wanted to propose anything um, or, or any legislation, and I said, honestly, I'd like to see where we could get rid of some of these laws that we've put <laughs> into place before we start adding new ones. Um, so, you know, learn, listen. Um, you know, I, I've, I was very fortunate in my, you know, high school life, in my professional life, to have great mentors, and now I'm, I'm equally as lucky to have great mentors. Um, with Len and, and other local politi- uh, politicians here in district. Um, and, and I'm going to learn from them and hopefully be the voice of the 34th district and, and, and take the concerns of my constituents up to the Capitol. Yeah, that's great advice uh, for Len to tell you. We're speaking um, with Senator-elect Paul Ciccarella. He's uh, assumed the district uh, vacated by outgoing Senate Republican leader Len Fasano. Yeah, I mean, not just navigating your way around physically within the Capitol and the LOB, but knowing who the players are, who the people are in their respective uh, departments and, um, you know, everybody up there. And that just, that's just going to take time. But I got to tell you, I already like what I'm hearing from you. Number one, you said something about doing something about the laws that are already on the books. Why, why add more? That is, I've always thought that. And I, which is why I, when I was there, uh, for my two terms, I, um, I would, I would have a maximum amount of bills that I would want to submit, knowing right off the bat that about half of them would never see the light of day. I would never introduce more than 10 bills. And, and true to word, I don't think any more than, you know, five of them would ever, uh, uh, you know, catch on. And even once they catch on, they, they, that doesn't necessarily mean that it'll go through the entire legislative process to completion. I understand that you're going to be the ranking member of the uh, housing committee. So I know that access to housing as well as the issue of evictions will be a major issue for the legislature next year. So talk about your approach to committee work. And has Len Fasano given you any advice when it comes to uh, being the ranking member of housing? So um, I'll have to pull off the speed dial and give him a call. I've not had a chance to talk to him yet about the housing um but, you know, that is going to be a big problem. Um, yeah. You know, I, I have a, a couple of investment properties and, you know, I have to pay the mortgage and, you know, 
we have to find that balance. People can't be out on the streets, um, but, you know, people have to find a way to get back to work. And I think that's where we as legislators really need to figure out a way to get people back to work. And that starts with making this a little bit uh, friendlier for, for small businesses. Um, and, you know, hopefully there's a trickle down effect. People get back to work, they can start paying their bills. Um, <clears throat> but that is going to be a big problem. Um, I've been paying attention to that. Um, a few bar associations are hosting some, I think it was the Fairfield Bar Association was holding a seminar on this mm-hmm. um, because it is going to be a big issue. And with the backlog of all the other issues and, and, and court cases that have not been heard, this is going to be a real problem. Um, so we're going to have to get creative and make sure people have a warm, safe place to live. But uh, the owners of these properties are not also, um, right. you know, on the street. It is one of those situations where, mm-hmm. as a legislator, you know, you this really goes for anything. And you, you even said this a moment ago, where you've got to... Um, you've got to listen to all sides of, of every issue and be objective, you know, and then base your decision and your vote, whether it's a committee vote or a full legislative body, uh, vote based on that. Because like, like you were mentioning, you had alluded to there being unintended consequences as a result of the outcome, uh, f- from these votes. And this is really truly an issue, Paul, that, you know, you look at the state being shut down, people losing their jobs or, or being laid off, or in some cases, uh, t- taking a, uh, a, a, a cut in salary to do the, yet the same work. Um, yet, um, yet the mortgage companies or landlords, if you're renting, they've got their monthly mortgage and th- that they expect tenants to help, co- you know, cover, you know, so there's really two sides of this that both have valid points. And, and this is going to be interesting considering that, you know, number one, people have already lost their jobs and the economy here in Connecticut um, is not exactly uh, full of strength right now. And we're hearing rumblings already that there could be another shutdown after the holidays in early part of uh, 2021. Uh, again, that would force more people out of work. Yes, um, it's a concern. I talked to a lot of uh, constituents, even when I was you know, out campaigning during this process. And I bumped into a gentleman um, who is living on a fixed income, but did have two properties. And, you know, he was saying that this is literally driving him broke. He is paying the energy bills, the, the utilities, et cetera. And he has no money to live. And, and there really is nothing he can do. His hands are tied. Um, and it's a problem. Um, and same thing with the restaurants and businesses closing down. Yeah. Um, you know, businesses that have been around for generations, you know, multiple generations, you know, bakeries, restaurants closing down. And that, that's really sad. Um, and, and again, trickle down effect. If they can't go to work, they can't pay their bills and feed their family. That's it. Um, are you also going to be the ranking member of the Veterans of uh, Veterans Committee as well? Yes, I am. Yes. Um, which I was very excited about. My uh, grandfather was in the Navy. Um, he served um you know, I respect veterans, and and I we we have to make sure we look out for them. They, um, you know, allow us the opportunity to be doing things just like this, and and I want to make sure that uh, their voices are heard. Um, so that was a real big one. Um, veterans Affairs and, and Public Safety um, were two that I really wanted um, to get on. Um, so uh, very excited about that. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm, and and especially our vets who are often overlooked. Um, Unfortunately, too often. Yeah, no, you're right. How about constituent work? Um, that always, you, you, people can always say, "Well, the legislature is part time," and I think there's a misconception by the general public because the legislative session is part time. Constituent work is year round. And I know that you weren't in office, but I'm sure Len has informed you, and you, as a former uh, head of your uh, RTC, know that. Constituent issues are, you know, they know no boundaries. No, absolutely. And, and I vowed to be accessible, not just during session. Um, when I was campaigning on my palm card, my cell phone was on there. Um, and I want them to reach out. I, I want to be accessible. And, and, and again, that's how you learn what the issues are here in district. Um, and, you know, I vowed to, to be accessible all the time. And that stands true not only during the election process, um, but why I'm uh, um, I'm serving in office? Yeah, what is your district like, by the way? What is it comprising? Right. What, what are the issues <laughs> uh, in 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 District 30, Senate District Thirty Four? Well, I mean, um, it's a working class um, district. Um, the concerns of Connecticut, you know, they yeah. they want to get back to work. 
Um, taxes are an issue. And public safety. When I was walking and knocking on doors, public safety was a big issue. We are very fortunate here in district. We have great police and fire um, in all of the towns. Um, but, you know, there's a rash of, of crime. Um, and, and in these towns, it's not common for some of the things to be happening that are happening. Um, so public safety is definitely a concern of my constituents. I was just uh, at a, um, uh, a legislative update for one of the towns in district, and we were talking about the rash of break-ins and stolen cars. Oh my goodness! Friday yeah. morning, yeah. Friday night, I'm driving um, home from my parents' house. Um, I went to go visit them, and of course, I get hit by a car. That car hits another two cars, takes <sighs> off. Oh. I fought with to get the plate, and sure enough, it was a stolen car. And oh. unfortunately, dispatch said, "Don't even worry, but we're not going to chase him down." Um, and again, talk about a trickle down effect. The insurance companies are, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. Wow. So everybody uh, that was involved in the incident is going to have to go after their own insurance. Hopefully that they have proper insurance to cover for incidents like that. And you know, it's happening everywhere. Yeah, it is. You're right. These break-ins are happening everywhere. And part of that is the judicial system. You know, you bust these kids and they're right back out and they're, perfor- they're performing the same crime just 24 hours later, you know? Um, I, I listen, I, I wish you a lot of luck in, in the legislature. Uh, you, you cover East Haven, North Haven, Wallingford, and Durham in, in, in 60 seconds or less. Um, are, are, the, are all those towns, are they pretty, pretty much the same or are there, is there a great discrepancy between any of them? Uh, for the most part, I would say they're all the same. Um, they all have their unique, uh, different, um, I guess, pros. Yep. Um, yep. East Haven has some waterfront, which is great. It's beautiful there. Uh-huh. Um, Wallingford has some great, you know, vineyards. Right. Um, so I think they're all, um, uh, they have the same issues. Um, sure. similar people that live within the town, but overall just a great district, great towns and great people. Listen, it's been uh, a pleasure chatting with you. I really appreciate your time. You're going to have to come back more often, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Good luck have in the uh, in your session, and uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy Holidays to you and your family as well. All right. That's, Thank you very uh, much. Take care. My pleasure. That's Senator-elect Paul Ciccarella. Y- you know, I like what I hear from this guy, particularly knowing that he's never held elected office, let alone... Senate, a legislative office, a state office, and yet he gave some fantastic answers, you know, um, going to introduce fewer bills. How often do you hear that? You know, and he understands there's consequences to every vote you take. No, oh, man, nothing truer has ever been said. 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 Nothing truer has ever been said.